What's up, guys? How you doing? Welcome back to Cigar Salute. I'm your host, Dan. I'd like to thank you guys for the overwhelming response that you guys gave to the Cohiba BHK 52 uh, cigar tasting and review. Um, the video's got a lot of views already, and I'm uh, really happy to see that you guys uh, were very interested in what I had to say in that feature. And uh, I uh, enjoyed recording that feature quite a bit, and it was definitely fun for me to uh, discuss a cigar that has been considered to be uh, an apex of cigar smoking, uh, pretty much from the day I uh, got into uh, smoking premium cigars. And um, I think it's uh, obvious at this point that you guys have a strong interest in uh, hearing me discuss uh, some of the uh, prestige cigars that are coming out now and showcasing them and talking a little bit about the uh, origins and the brands and whatnot, and I certainly enjoy uh, covering those topics, okay? And um, I just got a box of cigars in today that I had been uh, really, really uh, itching to get for quite a while. Um, they just came out earlier this year, and um, while I am not typically somebody who chases regional editions and limitadas and reservas or anything like that. Uh, this is a regional edition cigar that I had been lucky enough to score a five pack of early in the year, right around the time that COVID started. And the cigar impressed me so much that I uh, made a mission to seek out a uh, cabinet and they are only available in 50 count uh, cabinets. So um, they, uh, they're not easy to find, and uh, what makes it even more difficult to find is that they are an uh, Italian regional edition, and those of you who know about Italy and their tobacco uh, laws, um, the online shops in Italy and the brick-and-mortar shops in Italy, uh, it is illegal for them to uh, sell tobacco online uh, out of the country, so you can't just order a box of cigars from a site in Italy and have them shipped uh, to the U.S. or otherwise, okay? So um, really, like, if a vendor does not have any of a particular uh, Italy regional edition in stock, then your only option is a uh, private sale or some other back channel. And um, I wound up getting this uh, cabinet of uh, Punch Mantua, uh, which is the 2018 Regional Edition for Italy, which was just released uh, in March of this year, 2020. Uh, I wound up getting it in a private sale from an individual um, that I met in a Facebook uh, Cuban Cigar Club, okay? And this is why I always emphasize the importance of hooking up with the Cuban Cigar community online, because uh, without... Um, without having access to a club like this, I never would have been able to obtain this uh, cabinet of cigars. And let me tell you guys, uh, I'll be showing photos up in the corner, uh, that this is a gorgeous cabinet of cigars. Uh, this is only the second 50 cab uh, that I have in my collection. Uh, you guys may remember I showcased pictures earlier in the year of a 50 count cabinet of Poor Laranaga Petite uh, Coronas. And uh, these uh, Punch Mantua are uh, Legito number two size Panatellas. They are six inches long by 38 ring gauge. And uh, that happens to be my uh, favorite uh, Vitola. Uh, some of my favorite cigars are made in that Vitola. The uh, Cohiba Corona Especial, the uh, Monte Cristo Especial number two. And uh, they just, they don't make enough of these, uh, Cuban or otherwise. And, um, I really, uh, I prefer them to straight up Lanceros because uh, the uh, shorter length to me makes them uh, tend to, to draw a little bit better. They burn a little bit better. And uh, the abbreviated length compared to a full size seven and a half inch long Lancero uh, for someone who likes to take their time with cigars like myself, um, it's a more uh, convenient um, time frame uh, to have the full uh, smoking experience. So this cabinet of cigars in particular, uh, I feel was a great example to showcase to you guys and discuss the 
history of um, Habano SSA regional editions, how the program came about, when it came about, and I really feel like it is a great example uh, to discuss, and we are going to be doing a tasting of the Punch Mantua. Um, this is from a uh, five-pack that I had gotten from a uh, fellow member of my Cuban Cigar Club uh, from the Czech Republic. Uh, he had sold me a five-pack early in the year, and um, I was so impressed with uh, the last cigar that I had out of this five-pack that uh, that's really what prompted me to um, make sure that I uh, procured myself a cabinet. So we're going to come back in a minute, and without further ado, we are going to light up this Punch Mantua, and we're going to get into it, guys. We'll be right back. Welcome, guys. So I'm really uh, happy that I'm going to get to light one of these up tonight. Uh, and again, this is not from the 50-count uh, the cab that I just uh, got today, okay? Uh, this is the uh, last cigar out of a uh, fiver that I got earlier in the year, okay? And um, this cigar impressed me uh, so much, and it is definitely uh, in the top five cigars that I smoked uh, so far this year, and a lot of people are really uh, hyped about this release and taking notice of it, okay? Um, there was only uh, 2,500 boxes uh, produced, and it was released at the worst possible time. Uh, I believe it was released on March 6th, uh, 2020. Um, if it wasn't the 6th, then it was right around that time, and... Um, you know, within a couple of weeks of the cigar being released, uh, basically uh, the world shut down. And uh, the uh, Postal Service went haywire. And um, I remember when uh, just waiting on the five-pack from the Czech Republic, um, it took a good month and a half for me to get that. And... Um, the uh, vendors were a little slow in getting stock because, uh, you know, some of the gray market vendors, they managed to procure some stock. And uh, the uh, cigar was released uh, with an MSRP of uh, 600 euro for the uh, 50 count cabinet. And uh, quickly uh, the MSRP went out the window. And I have rarely seen a box of cigars. Uh, jump in price as quickly as this cabinet did, okay? And um, you could see vendors such as uh, Cigar One now selling cabinets of these for about 1800 USD, which uh, there is no way that I paid that much. So before you guys think, uh, before you guys uh, think to yourselves that I'm out of my mind, uh, please know that I would never pay that much for something like this. Okay, a little purge. Mm. Okay, and um, one thing that I really liked about this cigar is that it does not have the uh, typical earmarks of a Cuban punch, all right? Now, if you were to remove the band of this cigar and tell me that it was a regional edition Cuban cigar, um, I would not guess punch. I would guess La Gloria Cubana, okay? Uh, in my opinion... This is the absolute closest thing that you could get today to a La Gloria Cubana Metal Day or number two. All right, uh, it has the same type of floral notes uh, with the same bit of uh, salty sweetness that a good LGC Panatella has. Uh, you'll find it in the Metal Day or number four, but you'll find it heavier in the number two and. Mm. Mm. bright and floral and uh, 
a little bit of sweetness mixed in there. And uh, just like the, the floral isn't just one singular floral note, okay? It's an entire bouquet of uh, floral, all right? And I love cigars that are heavy on the floral notes like that. Uh, like I was saying, uh, this cigar reminds me very much of a La Gloria Cubana cigar. And um, if you uh, remove the band and it didn't tell me what it was, I would think that it was some new LGC cigar that was... Uh, that was uh, yet to be released or something like that. Uh, right now, the uh, Meadow de Or number four has not been rolled since 2017. And the uh, Meadow de Or number two uh, was discontinued uh, in 2014. Okay, and uh, even uh, Meadow de Or number four boxes right now are very difficult to obtain. Uh, none of the vendors have them. Uh, maybe if uh, you live... Uh, outside the U.S. and have access to a uh, local cigar shop that sells Habanos, you might get lucky and find a box uh, on the shelf somewhere. But any online vendor, you are not finding any uh, MDO number four. And uh, MDO number two, uh, there are a few boxes floating around on the secondary market, but I will warn you right now that a cabinet of 25 is going to fetch about $1,500 right now is the uh, most recent price that I saw for a uh, ca uh, cabinet of uh, MDO number two from La Gloria Cubana. So to get 50 cigars that have a very similar profile to La Gloria Cubana's MDO series um, is, a, uh, is a beautiful thing, okay? And, you know, this, the cigar is distinct enough where it has its own identity outside of having similarities to LGC, but that uh, familiar taste uh, really, really drew me in. And um, mm. so it's light in strength, but it is uh, very full on flavor, okay? And uh, that's one thing I love about Cuban cigars is that they can be complex and very flavorful without knocking you on your ass in terms of nicotinic strength, okay? And um, that's something that I really have started to resent about uh, Nicaraguan cigars and whatnot. And uh, that's one thing I liked about brands like Illusione, um, out of, you know, using Nicaraguan tobacco, uh, Dion Giolito, you know, he'll straight up, uh, forego putting Lajero primings in his blends to give them more nuance. <clears throat> it's not necessarily about how strong you can make a cigar. It's how balanced and harmonious it is and, and how good it tastes, you know? And, of course, we want a little bit of strength in there to make it, you know... Uh, satisfying on that primal level that nice little head change that we all enjoy when we smoke a good cigar but at the same time I am totally willing to give some of that up uh, in exchange for a more balanced and complex experience all right and these cigars are good now and I am very curious to see what they'll be like in a couple of years um, Keep in mind that regional editions, the tobacco sourced for regional edition Habanos is aged for two years before it's rolled already. Okay, so uh, these cigars often smoke well uh, just a couple of months from the box date, and they only get better with time. Okay. Very bright, um, that uh, floral bo uh, bouquet continues to develop, uh, but we're also getting uh, some almost like uh, perfumed kind of notes, and uh, it's just, it's a very bright and elegant cigar, all right? And uh, the construction on this is immaculate, uh, the draw is very good. Uh, one thing, you know, that always uh, worries folks when they're dealing with cigars with uh a thinner ring gauge is, is the thing going to draw. Uh, I'll tell you right now that Cuba has gotten infinitely better with uh, having their cigars draw well. 
uh, right out of the box. And uh, usually, if there's an issue with the draw on any cigar, it's typically due to overhumidification. Uh, so dry boxing is always a good solution, and whatever cannot be corrected uh, with dry boxing, I would highly suggest uh, picking yourself up a uh, perfect draw cigar tool, uh, which I have spoken in the praises of that uh, endlessly on this channel. And uh, look, I'm fucking sitting here with the microphone like three feet away. Uh, my apologies. So um, <laughs> my girl's uh, laughing at me right now in the background. So uh, we're going to come back in a minute. All right, guys? I'll check back in probably uh, at the end of the first third. All right? All right, guys, welcome back. So we are just entering the second third of our cigar right now. And uh, let's talk a little bit about the Punch Mantua, okay? Now, Mantua, if you guys are wondering what that means, uh, this is where the uh, link between Italy and Cuba occurs. In the 1700s, there was a ship named Mantua, carrying Italian sailors, which crashed off the west coast of Cuba. These shipwrecked sailors settled in the western part of the Pinar del Rio province and founded the city of Mantua, which is still there today. Okay, so regional edition cigars can often have an interesting little story behind them like that one, all right? And uh, one thing you guys uh, probably noticed before anything else about this cigar is the uh, band, which I think looks fucking dope as hell. Uh, it is a uh, black, white, and uh, gold band, very similar to the uh, La Sepsion bands uh, that came out uh, as Italian regionals a couple of times uh, within the last few years. And um, it has uh, the Punch logo uh, in white, on a black background and then it has this beautiful gold uh kind of like uh almost like a rope type laurel frame around it and uh it's just a very regal looking band and uh of course you have the uh the iconic uh regional second band that uh all regional editions have uh since 2005 okay uh the original regional editions that came out for cuba they didn't always have a secondary band uh, denoting its uh, exclus uh, exclusive uh, nature. But um, obviously all regional edition cigars today have this secondary band. And as we know, <laughs> that a lot of people go nuts for anything with the second band on it. All right. And uh, we've entered the second third of our cigar and things have picked up for us over here. Okay. Mm. Mm. There's been a noticeable increase in strength. Uh, we have now, in the uh, background of the cigar, in addition to the bright floral, to balance it out, we have some uh, deep kind of woody notes and a bit of baking spice thrown in as well. And things are uh, marrying together very nicely. All right. And uh, this is a very elegant cigar, uh, medium strength, and uh, definitely, definitely very satisfying. Uh, the draw has been A1 on this thing. And uh, a good Panatella delivers uh, a concentrated smoke um, and uh, in a way that just cannot be obtained with a uh, thicker ring gauge cigar. All right. And it just, it really, uh, the thin ring gauges, they really just, they hit every station of the cross for me. And I've always been a, a fan of thinner ring gauges and um the uh regional distributor for italy for habanos sa which is uh and uh forgive me if i'm butchering this guys all right um diadema spa uh one thing that they set out to do with their regional editions and particularly this one as well is uh bring back some of the uh the lost uh facets of habanos culture all right. Oh, we went out. 
So uh, this is twice now within the last 10 years that uh, Diadema has released a uh, Legito number two Vitola as their regional edition. Okay, we know that uh, the uh, 2011 Italian regional, the uh, La Sepsion Selectos Finos, uh, is one of the most legendary regional edition releases that have come about so far. Uh, we know that those were Legito number twos, and they are they are also considered uh, one of the uh, strongest, most full flavored Habanos ever produced in the last twenty years. And uh, I can attest, I never had the Selectos Finos, but uh, I still have a, a few uh, Don Jose's, which was the uh, 2015 uh, Italy Regional Edition, and those are uh, five by 48 uh, Hermosos number four Vitolas, and those are like Robanas on steroids. Okay, uh, Vegas Robana is one of the strongest uh, full-flavored uh, Cuban cigars in production today. And um, the uh, La Sepsion Don Jose uh, had all the strength and uh, sweet spice of a Robana, but kicked up a notch. Uh, and um, this, uh, this Mantua obviously is not that kind of cigar, but uh, the Legito Number no. 2 Vitola, uh, delivers such an elegance to it that um, it's really a, it really is a beautiful Vitola. And um, Diadema is trying to uh, issue a lot of callbacks with this release. And uh, they chose the 50-count cabinet format for that reason as well. If you guys go on to Cuban Cigar website uh, and you take a look at discontinued uh, Vitolas and whatnot, and you will see that uh, up until about 2002... A major culling took place, and another major one in 2006, 2010, 2012. Uh, you'll notice that a lot of, uh, especially in the niche brands, you will notice that a lot of cigars uh, were available in 50 count cabinets. Uh, you know, Schwa Supreme, St. Louis Ray Regios, uh, Juan Lopez Number no. Two, and uh, Punch Punch. You know, tons of of uh, Cuban cigars were available in 50 count cabinets and back in the day they didn't uh, anything that came in a cabinet really didn't come with a band on it and I, I can't imagine that honestly I, I just um, I love cigar bands I really do so you know getting a cabinet of cigars and having the only thing be able you know <laughs> the only thing being able to identify what it is uh, is the uh, you know the silk ribbon that wraps the the wheel and uh and the and the box you know it just uh to me it just i don't know you know i i like that they started putting bands on all the cigars but um and i'm glad that they, did, they didn't uh try and uh place these uh bundled naked in the cabinet uh but they did only come available in 50 count cabinets uh between that the thin vitola and uh the uh, old school looking band, they really did try to have this be a throwback release. And, um, that's part of the reason that I wanted to, uh, that I wanted to cover this with you guys because there's just a lot of things about this cigar that, uh, showcase, um, how special regional edition Hamanos can be. And I, prefer regional editions to uh edition limitadas by a long shot okay i am not somebody who chases every regional that comes out but when i see something that interests me i always go out of my way to try and uh procure at least a five pack just to see what it's about see if it's worth the hype and whatnot and the problem with uh limited run cigars like this is that um is that anything with the second band automatically gets targeted by uh, flippers and hoarders. And the difference between a flipper and a hoarder is a flipper buys a bunch of boxes of exclusive or rare cigars or high-end prestige cigars, and you know they may have better access to it than the average individual, and they will turn around almost immediately and sell those cigars at a markup whereas a hoarder could be either a, a very zealous collector who uh, buys 10 boxes 
of a limited release cigar and hangs on to them and possibly uh, waits until the market is commanding a much higher value for them to sell them or they just hang on to them to hang on to them. Uh, you'll see guys... Mm. Mm. The, the way the woodiness uh, interacts with the floral notes, it, it's really captivating. I love it. Um, you'll see guys online uh, giving tours of their humidor, and they'll have some of the, the most crazy rare cigars out uh, that were produced in the last 50 years. And, you know, you'll, you know they'll ask, uh, are you going to smoke any of those? Uh, no. I mean, I, you know, and sometimes they'll buy singles so they could... Uh, you know, enjoy the singles, uh, and then they'll leave the cabinets unmolested. But, um, you know, both of those uh, types of individuals, uh, they make it uh, more difficult for the average uh, Cuban cigar enthusiast to uh, procure themselves uh, some cigars to smoke, okay? And they also um, contribute to... Uh, the skyrocketing values um, or market prices, okay? And this cigar, another reason why I chose to cover it is that this cigar was a uh, very rapid victim of the uh, secondary market and uh, supply and demand, okay? And uh, these were available at a lot of the, uh, the vendors online up until probably about... Uh, the end of the summer, and towards the end of the summer, um, as soon as uh, some of the uh, vendors' uh, stocks dried up and it became apparent that whatever was out there was out there and that there wasn't any more shipments coming in, uh, all of a sudden the price uh, almost doubled on the cigar in a lot of markets. And it really, uh, it usually takes a little while for that to happen, usually a year or two, maybe a little bit longer. But um, in this case, it was just, it seemed to be like uh, an accelerated uh, ascent in price. And um, I was very lucky that I was able to, uh, uh, be uh, put together with an individual uh, who happens to be, uh, who lives in Italy, uh, who is able to uh, sell me the cigars at a very reasonable price compared to uh, what other individuals uh, were offering because I had placed a uh, In Search Of post in a uh, Cuban cigar uh, club on Facebook uh, that specializes in uh, limited and uh, vintage cigars. And the uh, offers that I was getting, I mean, guys were really, they were really trying to bleed me out, man. And uh, it was disappointing to see uh, even guys that are in my club, members of my club. Uh, and it wasn't my club that uh, I put this in search of post in. It was another club. And, you know, members of my club that happened to be members of this other club also, it was really disheartening to see them uh, offering the prices that they did. Uh, and it goes to show that uh, the whole brother of the leaf uh, concept uh, is just words to some folks. And uh, that's another reason I wanted to talk about this cigar. You really have to, uh, if you're going to be uh, pursuing, uh, obtaining cigars like this, you really have to be very uh, decisive, quick, uh, and aggressive when it comes to, to purchasing them. Okay, uh, don't hang out and wait for a better price. Uh, don't uh, put off tomorrow what you can do today, okay? Um, and always try to procure a regional cigar. Try to procure it in the market that it uh, was released for. That's where you're going to get the best price. Mm. Mm. So not a lot of uh, transitions or anything in flavor, but the uh, the strength is uh, gradually uh, amping up in the cigar, and it's very pleasant. Uh, it goes through the nose like butter, uh, just like we'd expect for a Cuban cigar. Uh, it is starting to uh, exhibit more of the classic uh, punch notes, and for those of you that uh, haven't watched my content before, 
uh, you guys should know that it was really a uh, it was a punch uh, punch the uh, Corona Gorda uh, that uh, is a part of the uh, Cuban punch marker uh, that really kind of uh, converted me from being uh, somebody who uh, smoked a lot of non-Cuban cigars and mixed Cubans in. Uh, it really was a punch cigar uh, that. Uh, converted me to a uh, Habano smoker who sometimes smokes uh, cigars from other provenance. Um, and uh, this is a, a really special cigar. And um, it's really um, one of the, uh, th this is really the first time that I've gone out of my way to chase a uh, elusive regional cigar. And uh, the demand for these right now is uh, very high. And uh, there's not a lot of supply out there left. Um, you can go on uh, Cigar One, uh, but I wouldn't advise uh, trying to get it there. Just the price is absurd. Uh, so, so the prices on some of the regionals uh, at Cigar One is just, and, and you guys already know um, that they, uh, they they have some absurd prices, period, but especially on the regionals. But they're not that out of line compared to what some other people are charging. Not as out of line as you would think they are. Uh, some other cigars... Uh, regional editions that have been a uh, victim of short supply and high demand uh, that have seen uh, meteoric rises in price. The uh, El Rey del Mundo uh, Contiki 1973. Um, a couple of guys in my club about a year and a half ago, they uh, split a cabinet and paid about 1950 for it. And we thought that they were crazy back then. And that same cabinet now of 50 cigars, uh, and they're 109 Vitolas, which if you guys don't know, those are very, very large cigars uh, with kind of like a, uh, not like a, not like a totally pointed cap, but um, like a, a pointy type cap. Like it, it comes to a, uh, it comes to like a conical tip uh, above the shoulder of the cigar. And uh, they're about seven and a half inches long. I think it's a 50 ring gauge. So they're big cigars, long cigars. But uh, that same cabinet now is uh, fetching about 2750 in some markets. And, uh, you know, that's a relatively recent release. You know, the, uh, the Punch Eslavo uh, 2014 regional edition for Serbia. Uh, I saw that on LaCasaDelTobacco.com for $4,000. You know, so the value for some of these vintage, uh, regional cigars is uh, insane. And um, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, how the regional uh, edition program works. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, some of the uh, notable releases in the last couple of years. And... Uh, I'll talk a little bit about some of the, my experiences with regional editions. So regional editions uh, are something that is negotiated between the regional uh, distributor and Habanos SA. Okay, The uh, regional distributor are responsible for uh, bearing the uh, burden of the uh, overhead costs to produce the cigar, um, they are given options about what markers they can select, and they're given uh, three different blend options, and they pick the best out of the three uh, that they want to go with uh, for the release that's to be commissioned, okay? And um, if the cigar is to come in any sort of uh, special packaging or anything like that, I and mean, you remember the... Uh, Diplomaticos uh, Bushidos from Pacific Cigar Company uh, for the uh, the uh, Asian market a few years back. Uh, they came in those uh, those fancy uh, covers on the boxes and everything like that. All that stuff is the responsibility of the distributor. And I believe there is a minimum order um, of cigars that the distributor must take from Habanos S.A., uh, I believe it's 25,000. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'll put the proper number at the bottom. But uh, the uh, regional edition program, uh, it cannot be any of the global markers like no Cohiba, no Monte Cristo, 
no Romeo and Juliet, no A. Chapman, no Partagas. And um, it has to be uh, a niche brand, and it cannot be a Vitola from that brand that is currently in production. So uh, you can't make a, uh, a regional edition punch Corona Gorda because there's already the punch punch. You get what I'm saying? Uh, and a lot of times, uh, they'll uh, like the uh, current uh, Taiwan regional, the uh, El Rey del Mundo Tainos. Uh, that was a uh, coveted regular production cigar from El Rey del Mundo years ago uh, that's been out of production for some time. The, they resurrected that Vitola and brought it back um, 8,888 boxes uh, for uh, the Asian market. Okay. And uh, if you guys are interested in that, I would uh, I would uh, hang around Friends of Abanos and uh, check out their 2424. That's probably where you'll get the best deal on them. There's also uh, the uh, Punch 898, uh, which is a uh, Lonsdale. And uh, I can't recall if Punch had a Lonsdale out at one time or not. Uh, but that's uh, a, a very popular regional edition out right now. And... Uh, the way that uh, Pacific Cigar was able to release two regional editions this year is that they designated the El Rey del Mundo Tainos for Taiwan, uh, which uh, is uh, labeled on the cigar as Formosa. And uh, Asia Pacific got the Punch 898. Uh, you'll see. Uh, I'll post a. Uh, I'll post photos of a box of uh, Juan Lopez Eminentes, uh, 2016 Swiss Regional Edition that I had bought a while back. Uh, I'll post it uh, in between the uh, chapters, uh, and you guys will see that um, Juan Lopez has a really beautiful dress uh, box artwork uh, that's not in current production, but it was resurrected for the regional edition, and. Uh, it's really that stuff is really cool to me, and um, I I would be lying if I said that uh, you know that 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 wasn't part of the reason that I bought some of these cigars. The uh, La Gloria Cubana Serie D number no. five uh, that uh, came out as a Spanish regional edition uh, a couple of years ago uh, that has some of the most beautiful uh, artwork uh, on the interior of the box. And um, those of you who have asked me uh, how to remove those god-awful health warning stickers from a box of cigars. Uh, remove the cigars from the box, place them somewhere safe, uh, get yourself a hairdryer, and heat up the, uh, the box by the sticker and slowly peel, okay? Um, you're going to burn your fingers a little bit, but... Uh, once you heat up the sticker, the glue behind the sticker will start to heat up and you'll be able to peel the sticker without ripping the box and leaving uh, the uh, disgusting uh, glue residue that gets left if you try and uh, rip the sticker off cold. Okay, um, I will post photos uh, of the 10-count uh, box of uh, Edmundo Dantes uh, Conde Bellicoso, which came out for the uh, Mexican market a few years back. And um, if you guys know um, the uh, Mexican market, you'll know that some of uh, their health warning stickers are the absolute worst out there. Uh, they uh, consume the entire bottom of the box, the sides, and over half of the top. And if you guys don't know about Edmundo Dantes, um, it was uh, a concept created by uh, Max Gutman. Uh, the uh, the former owner of uh, the La Casa del Habano down in Mexico and uh, the uh, owner of the uh, regional distributor down there in Mexico. I believe he has sold off the uh, company now to uh, a new owner. But uh, Edmundo Dantes, uh, it, when you look at the artwork, it's very obvious that it's uh, a nod to Monte Cristo and if you don't know who Edmundo Dantes is, uh, Ed, Edmund Dantes is the, uh, is the Count of Monte Cristo. He is the main character of the book. And uh, mm, 
I'm not 100% sure why they did this, but my assumption would be it is to uh, it was to circumvent the uh, Habano Sese's rule about not using global brands for regional editions. Okay, um, there was three Edmundo Dantes releases, and uh, we've been told that there will not be any more. Even though there was rumors going around for a little while that Edmundo Dantes was going to become a production brand, uh, and it is said that. The Edmundo Dantes blend is an exclusive blend to Monte Cristo, that it's not just a uh, Monte Cristo rebanded, that Edmundo Dantes is its own thing. Okay, so uh, we're going to come back in a couple of minutes uh, when we finish up the uh, second third here, and we're going to check back in uh, when we get into the uh, last third of our cigar. All right, guys? So uh, we're going to put the nail in the coffin on this feature And uh, we got just a little bit of cigar left And um, one thing that was kind of uh, floating around the background of this cigar That I wasn't quite able to put my finger on For the first two thirds that really uh, made itself known in the last third Is uh, the uh, classic uh, Cuban twang That uh, ever uh, revered uh, flavor that no one could seem to uh, verbalize effectively, but um, mm. yeah, hell yeah, it's uh, a universally uh, almost enjoyed feature that uh, is exclusive to uh, Cuban tobacco, and uh, that flavor has emerged in a very prominent way in the last third, uh, in addition to. Uh, the uh, woody notes that remain and the floral notes have kind of migrated to the background a little bit uh the cigar has ramped up considerably in strength uh, i'm trying not to draw on it too fast just because uh i don't want it to burn too hot which is something that could definitely happen when you have a, a cigar with uh, a thin ring gauge like this you know a 38 ring gauge uh when rolled properly uh it still commands your uh your patience and it really kind of the cigar controls the narrative uh and really punishes you if you are drawing too fast because it will become uh very hot and uh the uh smoke will start to become uh tannic and uh and a little bitter if you let the uh cigar heat up too much so you really want to take your time and pace yourself and uh if you don't have the time that a cigar like this requires, which I would say, just to be safe, set aside two hours for a cigar of this uh, ring gauge and size, uh, just so you, you can uh, enjoy it the way it's meant to be enjoyed. Um, because you just really, you're not going to get any grace or mercy out of the cigar if you are trying to suck down on this thing, uh, you know, in an hour's time, okay? So that just want to uh, put that little disclaimer there. All right. And uh, as far as the uh, draw goes, the draw has been immaculate. Uh, the uh, cigar has gone out on me a few times, though. And uh, that's a little frustrating, but, you know, I, I can live with that. Uh, it's an easy fix. But um, when you have a cigar that goes out on you repeatedly like this, it's very important that you purge upon relight, okay? And if you don't know what purging means, it's exactly what it sounds like. So after you get the, uh, the foot lit up again, uh, before you inhale, uh, before you draw smoke from the cigar, uh, take a breath and blow out into the cigar, like so. And uh, that'll help. Uh, any uh, accumulated uh, tars or anything like that, it'll help burn it up. And uh, now you are good to go uh, to resume smoking. Uh, and it will ensure that uh, you don't start getting uh, bitter uh, tannic notes out of the cigar. And once again, I had the mic a little too far away. But... Uh, 
I double checked and uh, you know it's still reasonably picked up the sound. Uh, it's definitely not going to be a harkening back to the old days before I had the microphone. Uh, so somebody told me actually uh, when I first started uh, using the microphone early on this year, uh, they're like, "Thank God that kid got that microphone." Oh my goodness! And uh, I I'm very happy with the way the sound has been since I started using this thing. But um, anyways. So in the last feature, I uh, had mentioned that I was wishing that Cigar Aficionado would uh, start to do a, uh, a uh, top cigar list for the year, uh, a separate list for uh, Habanos. And, um, you know, then they could do the, another list for the uh, American market cigars uh, because, uh, you know, I feel like that cigar aficionado, they have too many relationships um, at stake to, uh, you know, all Cuban cigars produced by one company, you know, and if you have too many showings by this one company's uh, cigars, uh, you know, if you have too many cigars in the top 25 that are from Cuba, it's basically, whether you feel that way truly or not, you know, let's face it, uh, Cigar aficionado, they have relationships to maintain, and they can't have the list be saturated too much with Cuban cigars, uh, because that will draw the ire of their uh, their American market uh, compatriots and whatnot. So it's been a very odd couple of years. Uh, with the top 25 lists for uh, Cigar Aficionado. And uh, I hear this in uh, some of the uh, American market cigar forums online. Oh, if Cuban cigars were so good, how come they only had three or four cigars on uh, Cigar Aficionado's top 25? You know, it's been American cigars that have been winning the uh, number one spot the last few years, blah, 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 this, that, this. Uh, and I think the uh, the last time Cuba won the top spot, was uh, when the Monte Cristo number two got it in 2013, and I think uh, what was it 2015 or 16? The Ramon Ionis especially uh, selected got number two. Um, but let me say, man, let's not wait for Cigar Aficionado to come out with a uh, top 25 list or anything like that. Uh, I think that it's definitely in order for Cigar Salute to host our own uh, top Cuban cigar list for uh, 2020. Now, when I say 2020, I'm thinking we're going to include 2019, as obviously, as well. Um, oh, man. Whew. Uh, this, thing's get, this thing is getting just... It, it's been getting progressively better as the cigar... Uh, burns down and just this last third has just uh brought it to a level where it's just it's it's an incredible cigar it really is um i'm thinking uh we're gonna have to have a chat guys and uh i want you guys in the comments to uh list to me uh give me a list of your top 10 um uh, best cuban cigars for 2019 slash 20 uh 2020 um I only have a handful of 2020 boxes, and uh, I don't think I've even really dipped into any of them yet, except for maybe one or two, uh, just because, you know, I recently got a uh, a uh, cabinet of uh, Trinidad Vigias uh, that were rolled at El Leguito. I've been lucky because both of the uh, cabinets of Trinidad Vigia I've gotten have been rolled at El Leguito. Um this most recent uh, cabinet that I got, though, is from May of 2020. Now, I'm sure that they are already smoking well. Um, but I personally, I like to wait till there's at least, you know, eight to ten months on a box of cigars uh, before I dig in. Um, the sick period seems to be something uh, of the past. The last couple of years, um, people almost universally agree that, 2018, 2019, and 2020 boxes, uh, these cigars are smoking very well uh, right off the truck, okay? Um, but, you know, this is just something that I uh, personally uh, subscribe to. 
Uh, if you guys are enjoying stuff right off the truck, go with God, is what I say. Um, nobody should be telling you uh, what you can and can't enjoy. All right? So please, uh, if you guys care to, uh, give me your top 10 Cuban cigars for 2019, 2020, uh, which uh, segues into my next point. Uh, but let me get to that in a second, actually. Uh, to elaborate on my previous point, uh, what I'd like is to compile the answers that you guys give me uh, and see if there's a you know a common pattern here. And um, what we're going to do, we're going to try and uh, compile uh, from the selections that you guys uh, give me in the comments section. Or you can email me too, whatever you prefer. Uh, I'd prefer that you uh, commented this way uh, everyone could see. Um, you know, what you guys are uh, really feeling the most out of everything. But if you want to email me, that's fine. Uh, you know, and if we get enough uh, feedback, uh, we'll have a, uh, a user, uh, a, uh, a uh, fan-generated uh, list of uh, the top Cuban cigars for the year. And um, to segue into my next point, uh, somebody asked me in a... Uh, I keep yapping and this fucking thing's going out. Um, if uh, Vendor Bowl was coming back this year. Now, I had said the I had said last year when I did Vendor Bowl um, that it was going to be an annual feature. And um, while I had every intention of that, uh, I don't think it's practical to do Vendor Bowl uh, in its original form. Uh, this year, just because uh, COVID has uh, screwed everything up so badly that it's really unfair to uh, rate the vendors in the way that I did last year. And um, as far as uh, are these vendors safe to purchase from or not, uh, the vendors were legit last year. They were legit the year before. They were legit the year before that. And they will continue to be legit. Uh, so there's really no fear in that regard okay um but 2020 being what it's been uh that really kind of uh forced my hand in uh in addressing the out of stock issues that were going on for months and months at a time and i had a whole bunch of uh vendors that i hadn't used before that i had in my back pocket from recommendations from friends and whatnot uh, so, I mean, I didn't really have any, uh, you know, major amount of purchases with uh, any of the five vendors that we uh, d covered last year in Vendor Bowl. I didn't really have those kind of, uh, that kind of volume with any of those vendors this year. So it's difficult for me to sit here and uh, go in depth in, uh, in, des in describing my uh, experiences with them. Um, the best way to get updates on what's going on with the, with the vendors that we've covered on this channel is to watch the intros to most of my videos uh, because that's where I discuss current news and events and whatnot. You know, like a couple of features ago when I did... Uh, mm, oh, man. Uh, Humidor Scores Volume 3. I had uh, talked about the uh, shipping issues going on with Friends of Abanos and uh, that a significant number of packages are coming in through LAX and uh, they're uh, getting processed through customs. They're getting processed and sent to the uh, Los Angeles uh, Regional Distributing Facility, but then for some reason they're, turning, get, they're getting turned around and sent back on a plane to Sydney um, and going back to uh, FOH uh, HQ. Uh, only to be reshipped again. Uh, to uh, round out that whole topic, uh, I did finally receive my July package from FOH uh, right at the beginning of the month. I think it was uh, the Monday after Halloween I got it, and uh, or Tuesday after Halloween, I think. But um, you know, so that was a package uh, that I had been waiting on since July that I got in November. And uh, one of my viewers, he just had two boxes get turned around on him. 
and uh, several other of my viewers had the same issue as well. Uh, it's not a custom thing, uh, customs thing, guys, because if it was a customs thing, uh, those cigars would not be going back to their uh, country of origin. They'd be sitting in some customs agent's humidor right now. And uh, it's, been a, it's been a very, very odd year. Uh, you know, no, I don't think anybody could have foreseen uh, COVID being what it is. And in addition to that, I don't think anybody could have foreseen uh, COVID having such a strong impact on the, uh, on the Cuban cigar market. And um, Habanos SA is only at about 50% capacity from where they are typically uh, due, to, uh, due to COVID. Uh, and when I say that, I'm speaking in regards to uh, production volume and, and uh, the amount of cigars that they're kicking out, okay? Uh, there's just not as many cigars around as there was last year. And for those who haven't heard, um, even though... Uh, Joe Biden won the election, and uh, I would assume that he is going to uh, to uh, revert the uh, Cuba policy back to uh, what it was during the Obama years. Uh, even though he is the uh, president-elect currently, um, the uh, Trump rules are still in effect right now. And uh, not only can you not go to Cuba as easily as you could, uh, under the Obama presidency, but also you cannot bring any Cuban cigars back, not even five cigars, let alone, you know, uh, $800 worth without anybody uh, batting an eye at you, you know. So um, those of you who were planning on going to Cuba and loading up, uh, keep that as a, uh, a wish right now because that's all it is. Uh, as far as things go today, you know, we can't go to Cuba, load up on cigars at an insanely low price and come back to the States with them, okay? And that uh, brings us to the next point. Uh, Habanos SA has just uh, raised its uh, prices for uh, domestic cigar sales uh, by uh, 20% and much more in some cases, uh, $100 in some cases, Okay. Uh, so um, I don't know yet. I don't think that that's really going to affect uh, prices for exported cigars. We've already seen uh, an increase in the cost of exported cigars already this year. So I think that what it is is that our, our illustrious president has choked out the uh, Cuban economy by uh, playing around with... Uh, the ability to uh, generate income and the uh, impact on uh, remittances and whatnot and the uh, sanctions uh, being tightened on Cuba in addition to uh, the economic toll that COVID's already taken on the island. Uh, I think that this is what prompted Habano S.A. to uh, facilitate a uh, price increase for their uh, domestic cigar sales. But... Cuban cigars in general have gotten more expensive uh, compared to what they were even uh, in January and February. And uh, it makes me really happy that I stocked up heavily uh, in 2019 especially uh, because these uh, cigars are only going to continue to get more expensive as time goes on. Hopefully things have kind of leveled out uh, compared to... Uh, you know, how they were at the beginning of the year, and hopefully we've seen the last uh, of price increases for a while. But um, you guys will notice, like I said a couple of videos ago, at the very bottom and at the very top, uh, that's where you'll notice the most uh, dramatic uh, price changes. But uh, regardless, guys, uh, we're going to be covering soon. Um, we're going to be talking uh, the top boxes that I received in 2020 um, as it stands now that's what I'm really kind of planning to do in lieu of uh, the uh, first uh, edition of vendor bowl uh, instead of focusing so much on the vendors um, we're going to be focusing on the quality of the cigars that I received 
and I'm going to be showcasing some of the uh, beautiful boxes that I got this year. I have quite a few boxes that I got in 2020 that are just absolutely gorgeous, stunning cigars. Um, I just got this uh, cabinet of uh, H. Upman Connoisseur Number 1s from uh, Cigars of Avanos a couple weeks ago. And when you guys see the photos of this cabinet that I'm going to throw up right now, you guys are going to be like, holy shit. You know, the uh, the quality of Cuban cigars the last couple of years, I believe firmly, uh, and I'm not the only one who has this speculation, that in a few years' time, 2018, 19, and 20 boxes uh, are going to be coveted dearly, and they are going to be uh, considered uh, prestige vintages uh, or prime vintages for uh, Cuban cigars. Uh, and it, we're just... Um, in a golden age of Habanos right now, where uh, everything is just smoking ridiculously good. So get it while the getting's good, fellas. And uh, we're uh, at the end of our cigar right now, so we're going to wrap this up. Uh, it's after 1 o'clock in the morning. I'm exhausted. And uh, I want to thank you guys for your continued support. Uh, give me your suggestions. Give me your thoughts. And uh, like and subscribe. Uh, follow me on Instagram. I want to say thank you to all my new subscribers. There's been quite a few of you the last couple of months, and uh, I appreciate the uh, the love and support that you guys give me. And uh, I enjoy chatting with you guys. Uh, feel free to reach out via email or DM me on Instagram anytime you like. And uh, for those of you who are interested in joining up with Cuban Exchange 2.0, the uh, Facebook Cuban Cigar Club that I help administrate with a couple of trusted friends. Uh, hit me up, and uh, we'll get you hooked up, and you could uh, you could meet the fellas. All right? So you guys, stay well, smoke well. If I don't talk to you before Thanksgiving, uh, my American uh, brethren, have a great holiday. And uh, everybody else, be well, be safe, stay healthy. I'll talk to you guys soon.